Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, my name is Barbara. Thank you for tuning in. Today is gonna be something completely different from what my channel is about. My channel focuses on beauty and fitness, but today we're gonna talk about settings for your camera or for your phone, your iPhone, your Android, whatever, to help you have better quality for your beauty videos. I feel the need to do this because I've been researching for the past couple months and a lot of stuff I found on YouTube was specifically like for vlogging or for photography, but not for what we do. I was having issues with like every time I would go to show a product, it was coming out blurry or when I would go to show something, everything around would get dark and then this would get like super bright and then it would take a while to focus and the lights adjust again. I've had videos where color looks fine and then I start filming and I'm not paying attention and the next thing you know I look back and I'm green for some reason because of the way something shifted or displaying something changed one of my settings. So I was just like I need to figure this out or I'm going to quit. I'm fortunate enough to have a friend who works in filmography, he, he makes movies, he does it all. His Instagram handle is Sergino and I am forever grateful to him because I was ready to send this camera and this lens back and just go back to my phone and try to make do with that because I spent the money on camera and a lens thinking it was automatically going to make things better but as long as you're filming in auto it's not. So right now I'm going to tell you what you can adjust how to adjust it and what the adjustments will do as far as affecting how your videos look. So if you want to see all of those things, and I'm not saying by any means that my video quality is like the best, it is a whole lot better than where I started. And just right now, like I feel like this is so much brighter and more true to color than some of the other stuff I've done, but it's still a work in progress. I'm going to get some softbox lights and see how that works but guys i'm not a tech person so this is going to be like super basic but i know it's going to help you because it has made a huge difference for me so let me stop rambling i have my notes and i'll try to make this quick stay tuned and keep on watching all right so again guys this is gonna be basic. I'm gonna keep saying, <laughs> I am not a tech person. So if you have questions, comment below. If I know the answers, of course I'll answer. If not, your questions may be something that helps me and I like doing research and finding stuff out or I can go ask my friend. So definitely take notes, ask questions, and let me know what you guys think. So the first thing you can do to help improve your video quality is get a tripod number one now I have this tripod here these cost like 20 bucks on Amazon and they are so worth it plus a lot of them come with remotes and these are amazing because they sync up to your phone by Bluetooth or if you have a camera you can also get a remote for that so whenever you need to stop videos you don't have to keep getting up or reaching to do it you just push a button stops it get everything centered, push a button, starts it. This is a good investment. If you cannot, for some reason, afford to get a tripod, not everybody can, that's fine, at least find a way to like stack your stuff, your camera up on books or whatever kind of situation you have, put your camera to where it's at least eye level. You don't wanna take video where you're filming and it's down here and people are like looking up your nose while you're filming you don't want that try to get eye level so it seems more personable like you're talking to your audience number two film in landscape by landscape I mean this way not this way when you film this way which is called portrait and then you go to post on YouTube you have those big black bars on the side and people can't see the full video of what's going on. You want to film in landscape and when you see the settings on your camera, it will say 
16 by 9. That is the ratio that you want. If you use an editing software, you can also do 3 by 2 and shrink it down, but it'll cut off some of the top and bottom. So just make sure that you allow for that adjustment if you want to use the other setting. To be safe, just use landscape 16 by 9. That is the setting you need for YouTube. Number three, use your rear facing camera. Now I know it's aggravating because when you're trying to get set up, you can't see how you are. So you set everything up and you just pray that it's the right way and you're centered and everything because you can't see what's going on if you're doing this by yourself and you don't have help. In the beginning, I set it up on my tripod and I set up a mirror so that I could see I was filming this way, but I had a mirror right here and I would look off to the side so I could see if I was centered and that helped. But if I ever got out of focus or my colors were off, I couldn't see anything when I was actually filming and that aggravated me. So then that brought me to my next upgrade which is this. I bought a portable monitor. It's an external monitor. So what happens with this is you connect it with an HDMI cable and then you buy an adapter to have it with a USB that you need for your phone and you plug this into your phone. So when you're filming and you turn your phone on and you turn this monitor on, you will see what's on your camera. So I will show you real quick. Okay, so right now I have my phone connected to the monitor. Now I will tell you the thing that aggravated me with this is for whatever reason, I have an Android. I don't wanna hear it. I don't do Apple, never gonna switch. Since they have upgraded, my research found that anything after the Galaxy S8, when you use an HDMI and an adapter to connect an external monitor, it will not show on the full screen. It only shows this little bitty strip here. Okay, so here you can see, I had to turn the light off so you'll be able to see the monitor, but right now you're seeing what I'm filming on my phone in this monitor. So whenever I would film, I would be right here and I would be filming, but I could see myself up here. That made it easier for me to see that I was in focus and that my colors looked okay. But I was still just really aggravated that it was only showing this little portion of the screen and then all this extra space. And I reached out to T-Mobile, that's who I have service with, thinking it was an issue with my phone. It is a Samsung issue and I've upgraded my phone to now the S20 Plus and we still have this issue. So I tried for a while to also do it to my computer monitor, same problem. So this works and if you're on a budget, then it's a lot better than buying a laptop or buying a monitor screen. You can get these for about $100. So if you don't wanna get a camera yet, if you can't get a camera, but you want the external monitor, this is a great option. You may just have to work around this issue. So after fighting with that for about a month, I upgraded and I got a camera. I bought the Sony A64, the Sony Alpha A64. And the reason I went with Sony is because they do not shut off after 30 minutes. Canon cameras do. So if you film with a, with a Canon, and you wonder why your camera just dies after 30 minutes, it is set that way to help keep it from overheating. Sony changed something with the way they made their cameras, so I don't have that problem. I can film for an hour straight. I don't have any issues. I bought my camera with a kit lens, and the lens that came with it is this 16 to 50 millimeter lens so this one has the ability to zoom in and zoom out it's a pretty small lens and that's one of the things that they were saying was really good about it because you can travel with it and it's not really bulky and then i set everything up and i was like well this doesn't look right why is it so dark 
So I'm going to show you guys something else I learned from doing research because your camera can come with a certain lens, but there are also lenses that cost hundreds of dollars. There are lenses that cost over a thousand dollars and they cost more because they're able to let more light in. They're able to have a blurry background. There's all these different upgrades when you get a different lens. So I'm gonna show you right now the difference in the quality. I'm not gonna change any of the settings on my camera. I'm just going to put this lens on instead of the one that I eventually upgraded to and you'll see the difference. See the difference? I did not move my chair. I did not change any of the settings but everything is darker. When I first got the lens, I had to try to figure out what adjustments to make, but I was just like, I'm just gonna put it in auto so that I know it's gonna adjust what it needs to when it needs to, and I'm not gonna have to worry. But I still just did not like the quality of the footage that I was getting. It looked kind of grainy, and I just had to keep making adjustments when I was doing my editing. The only good thing about this one is that it zooms in and out, so I have a wider shot if I need it. And I will use this one sometimes when I'm filming haul videos, but if I'm doing a tutorial, I don't even like fooling with this one. So, same exact settings, only thing I changed was the lens. So now we're gonna go back to the other lens. Isn't that crazy? Like, I could not believe, and at first I was just like, I don't think that matters, I'm not gonna do it, because this lens is not even like top of the line lens. I did research, and I was gonna get a Sigma lens, because that's what you hear all the beauty gurus talk about, and one thing that they pointed out with the Sigma lens is that with the autofocus, you can actually hear it focusing which I never noticed until I started watching videos and you hear this little clicking almost like it's adjusting. And I was like, well, I don't really want that in my videos. So I ended up getting a Sony lens specifically for my Sony camera. And this one cost almost $500. Now the Sigma lens that they use for videos is around three, $400, something like that. But some of the other ones, like I watched Carly Bible, her lens is over at like $1,000. The good thing is if you're filming with your phone, these phones are really expensive and they have good cameras, they have good lenses. So you can get some really good quality videos out of your camera on your phone, but you still have to work with the settings. The other thing is to make sure that you have good lighting. If you're just in the bathroom with one light over the sink trying to film and get ready with me, Guys, that's not gonna look good. Would you wanna watch somebody doing a video like that? Probably not. I know it's a bit of investment. If you can't get a ring light or soft boxes, then the other best bet is to film using natural light, which looks amazing, but the problem is natural light goes in and out. It'll get dark, the clouds will come in, you wanna film and all of a sudden it's raining and you can't. There's too many factors that can affect your productivity. So I have one ring light and I will show you what my filming setup looks like right now when I'm filming with my camera. So this is gonna sound different because I'm filming with my phone, but I really just wanted you guys to see exactly what I have now. So there's my camera. It is on an individual tripod by itself. I used to have it on a tripod inside of the ring light, but I feel like the angle is better with the camera being a little higher and angled down like we do with our selfies. Um, and then it's on the center of the ring light or close to center so that the light can be more even around me as opposed to off to one side or the other. I do plan on getting two soft boxes that I'm gonna put on the sides to help bring more light because I still feel like my quality's a little dark. I don't know, like I want Jackie Ina quality videos. I want all the brightness, all the studio, like don't have anything to worry about. So that's the only thing that I still feel like I don't have enough of right now. I just figured out how to do that 
and I have a USB cable that is connected to my camera. So now I can completely see myself whenever I'm filming. I'm gonna turn the lights back on so you can see how it looks on the monitor. So I turned the light off earlier because I didn't want you guys to have to see this glare like this. But so right now, I look at myself in the viewfinder on top of the camera to make sure I'm centered because I don't trust this. But I trust this to look at the quality and also the lighting and the tone and to make sure that I'm in focus because... Sometimes the viewfinder is too small. Your girl is blind. I wear contacts. One thing that I like is Sony has this option and so does Canon. If you have a Canon camera, you can plug in using their utility software app. And now I can adjust my camera settings with me in front of the camera by adjusting settings on my laptop. So right now we're going to get into settings for your camera to adjust the quality if like me right now you're struggling with one light and you need to make things brighter but also to keep your lighting even and to make your colors show better okay so now i've moved in a little bit and i'm going to show you first i'm going to explain and then i'm going to show you what happens when i make changes to different settings on my camera now you can make these adjustments on your camera and on your cell phone. If you're shooting on your cell phone and I know for Android they have this, I'm not sure about for an iPhone, but there's an option to shoot in pro mode and it will allow you to make changes. So the very first thing that you should start with when you're adjusting the lighting, just in the settings for your phone is your shutter speed. Now, shutter speed is basically how many pictures your phone take, your phone or your camera will take per second to create the video. So, in case you didn't know, a video is just a bunch of pictures taken so fast that they look like a constantly moving film. Right now with YouTube, most of us are shooting 720p is pretty much like that's low. 1080p is high definition and then 4k is like ultra high definition. That is where you want to be but I don't think most not every camera films in 4k. After you see the 1080p you will see a number that either says 30 or 60 or 100 something like that. That's your frames per second. Most people shoot in either 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. That is the best to get a nice, smooth video. If you go slower than that, it'll make things start moving kind of jerky. If you go faster than that, it'll almost look like slow motion. So don't worry about those. You want to have your settings in either 4K, 24 or 30 frames per second or 1080p and then 24 or 30 frames per second. Your shutter speed is what you see right here. So I am currently filming in 4K and I'm filming at 30 frames per second. So my shutter speed should be double what my frames per second is. If you decide to shoot in 24 frames per second, there is no 48 so you either have to go 50 or 40 but you can see as i'm making the adjustments in the camera what happens when i change my shutter speed so it's getting brighter i don't show that the color is exact i look like washed out it's not good quality like that's the whole focus of what we're looking at right now so Rule of thumb, if you are filming 24 frames a second, then you want your shutter speed to be 50. If you are framing 30 frames per second, you want it to be 60. So I have mine on 60 and I'm leaving it at that. The next thing that you want to look at for your settings is your aperture. Now, 
I can do this while I'm filming. Some of this stuff I can't do while I'm filming, but I can do this, so I'll show you. So not every lens has the ability to change aperture. If you're doing it from your phone, I know for my phone, for my Android, I cannot change the aperture. But the aperture basically tells how much light that your phone, that your lens lets in. So when you watch, like right now you see everything in my background is blurry. If you ever hear the term bokeh, sometimes it's pronounced bokeh, but mostly I've heard bokeh, that is that they call it creamy, blurry background. And it basically just brings you more forward, focuses on you and blurs everything else in the background. You get this by being able to have an aperture number that is low. My original lens that I showed you that was dark, the lowest that that one would go was like 4.5 or something like that. The new lens that I bought actually goes to 1.8. So right now, this is the aperture. Whenever you hear somebody talking about aperture, you'll hear the term f-stop or I think that's it actually. Yeah, f-stop or aperture. So the smaller the number is, the blurrier your background will be. But that also changes the, the light settings in your, in your video. So if you can change your aperture and you feel like your lights aren't bright enough, I just changed my aperture, I'm down now to two, that made the video look brighter. If I go down to 1.8, which is the lowest this lens goes, now I'm even brighter. But the problem is if I'm trying to show products and it's this bright, I'll show you an example. This was my biggest issue. I would hold something up and this is not true to color. So I'm like, why doesn't this look like this palette is supposed to look? And then I was like, well, maybe it's just that one. So then I grab another one and I'm like, no, these colors still don't look right. Okay. I didn't know until I talked to Gino what I was supposed to change. So now I'm going to show you if I put like my other camera, the aperture I said only went to 4.5. So if I set this one to 4.5 right now, look how dark that is. And remember how dark it was earlier with the other lens? That is why. So if you get a lens, get one that you can adjust the aperture and filming with the lower number will make better quality. So I found for me, my personal preference is to have my aperture set at 2.5. That's where I have it. That's what I like. And I'm almost on my palette, Lord. So now, when you look at this, look at the difference in how the colors look. They look a lot more true to color, a lot more vibrant. All right, so the third thing that you change to help adjust with your lighting, if you feel like it's not exactly what you want, is your ISO or ISO. ISO is this right here. ISO determines how sensitive your lens is gonna be to light. So if you're outside and it's really, really bright, your ISO gets adjusted to accommodate the glare from the sun. If it's cloudy, then it'll also adjust for that. When I was trying to show products, if I didn't have my ISO set at a certain number and I just had it on auto, when I would hold something up, this would get bright and everything would get dark. Even if I was holding it like right here next to me, this would get bright, everything would get dark. And I was just like, what do I need to change to fix this? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So he literally spent 40 minutes on the phone with me. Let's adjust your ISO. Okay, now let's adjust your white balance. That's what we're gonna talk about next. But that's how I figured out like, oh, I didn't even know I could do this on my own and make it happen. I'll show you right now. My ISO is at 250. You should never have your ISO above 800. That's the research I found. That's what all the beauty gurus say. So that's what I'm telling you. I'm doing the research and telling you what I've learned. I'm at 250 with one ring light and my light in my room. Now, if I go lower, it makes the film look darker, 
but it also makes Look at the difference in how you see the color vibrancy. So if I were to put my ISO too high, you wouldn't be able to see this. But the problem is I feel like this is too dark for my face. Now, if you have more lighting, then you can turn your ISO down and the extra light will help bring lightness to you, but still make the quality of your products look better. But I don't have that. So I was like, I need to find a medium. Now I'm gonna show you if you put the ISO really high, I said don't go over 800, this is 1600. Look how everything looks washed out. Way too bright. You can't even see what color those are. Now the thing is, if you don't have a lot of light, so let's say I turn my lights down to right now we are at 40%. This looks better because my ISO is so high, but when you put your ISO really high, it makes your video quality look grainy. And you don't want that, like it's kind of staticky looking. This does help a little bit because if I don't have brighter lights, but you're sacrificing your video quality for it. So I'm gonna turn this back down. So if you have to make an adjustment, you don't have enough lights, this is something else you can change to help make everything brighter. And I'm gonna turn my lights back up. All right, I don't think this was the setting I had it on before, but that's fine. So now the last thing that you can change, which I cannot change while I'm filming, so we're gonna go back to my phone, is your white balance. And I will show you why that makes such a big difference. Okay, so now my settings are all back to where they were before, and I'm gonna show you guys what white balance does. White balance is used when you want to make your skin tone look different or your background environment look different. I realize personally, I like to have a bit of a more neutral to cooler tone, so it almost comes across a little more blue than I do to have a warmer tone. Now that's what I like, but is that what looks best for my videos? That's the problem. So I had that set to audio, to auto. Then I would hold up a product and I would be like, oh, okay, that's cute. But then I would notice the longer I was holding up, my face would start turning green. Why? So then I would put it down and it would have to auto adjust. Another time I had an extra light set up trying to bring in more light. And every time I picked my hand up on this side, my face went green. That's actually in my last video. And I was just like, why is this doing this? What did I change? So I'm gonna show you what happens when you change your white balance. Right now, mine is on a custom setting that I got using another tool that I found out about. This one is inexpensive. This one only costs, you can get this for $7 on Amazon and it's called a gray card. So, White balance is measured in Kelvins. So you will see 3000K, 5000K, 5800K. All that means is the tone of how the light is gonna come off. So I have my ring light set at, I believe it's 6900K. I have a remote for that, but I'm gonna check to make sure. See, okay, so my ring light, my remote tomorrow. My ring light is set at 5800K. That is a custom setting that I have. But if I wanted to make it look different, so if I go to auto white balance right now, notice how that's cooler than how I had it. Now this is what I like. I actually prefer this, but I don't know exactly what number this is. So again, guys, I'm still learning, but I like how this looks and then let's see when I hold up my products I just want you guys this is how I test to see if I like what I'm looking at so my color still looks good still looks true but again you can see everything doesn't look as yellow it doesn't look as warm so you decide you want to go in and you want to change your white balance this is auto white balance but they have different settings so this one says daylight so if I click that it goes back to a little more yellow. This looks more like what I had earlier. This is 
if you're in the shade, this is if it's cloudy, this is if you're under fluorescent light. So every time I click, this is what it looks like. So this is auto set, auto settings for what my camera has. This is my custom. This one says cool temperature filter. This one says fluorescent daylight. So now that's what that looks like. But if you want to manually change yours, you see right here, it says 4,500K. This is what the white balance looks like. This is what my product looks like. True to color, pretty bright, we like it. Now, let's say I decide to go lower. It adjusts super easy, but look what happens. So now I'm blue. So now we go higher. And now look how red I am. One thing I learned that was really important is with your white balance, your lights that you film with may automatically be set to a certain Kelvin. So Mike, I told y'all earlier, my ring light is set at 5,800 Kelvin. Well, if I'm filming and I set my white balance to 3,000, it's not gonna look good. You want them to match. But if I have a light that actually tells me what it's filming at, if you don't have that, one thing you can do to make sure that your white balance matches the lights around you is use this little thingamabob right here. If you don't wanna buy this, although this is literally like $7 on Amazon, you can use a white sheet of paper. You can set your white balance. So the way I do it on my Sony camera, and I'm sorry, I can only tell you for Sony, I don't know about a Canon, but Google how to do it, look on YouTube for yours. You go to your white balance setting and then you go to one of your customizable settings. So one is custom, two is custom. And then you want to set it. So you click set and then it tells you to hold up your gray card. I'm gonna put this up so you can see. Yeah, cause you can't see it on here. You can see it a little bit. So it tells me to press the center button to capture data of the central area in the screen. And there is a little black dot in the center. So what you'll see me do is hold up the gray card in front of it. And my camera is gonna take a picture of the gray card and match the film to what the gray card is reading. I'm gonna hold up my gray card. And I'm gonna take a picture. And that tells me that my white balance should be set at 6100. That is the best white balance for my camera and the lighting I have right now. All right, so this is basically what I see whenever I am recording on my phone. Now, normally I just do regular video and this is what it looks like. Everything is set on auto, but you can actually change these settings the same way you can do on a standard camera. If you go to pro video, then all of a sudden the same things you see on your camera, you see here. So this option, and this again is just for Android. I'm sorry, I don't know if this is on an iPhone. We have the option to be able to record with our rear microphone or our front microphone. Now, the very first thing when you are changing the settings for what you want for a video is you want to look at your shutter speed. That is this setting right here that says one divided by 60. So normally when you film and you go to your camera settings, we are in 16 by nine. You always want to film in 16 by nine. So here you can see the different options available. So right now I am on full HD. So this is 19 by 20 times 1080. 
So that's 1080p. You will see that on YouTube when you look at the settings for your playback quality. And then this 30 FPS is your frames per second. So as you can see, I have mine set in full HD, but I can also go up to Ultra HD, which is 4K. But this is pretty standard now these days, or you can go 1280 by 720, which is 720p when you look at your YouTube quality settings. But you see when I make the changes to that, look what it does to my video. The higher the shutter speed, the higher that number, the darker the video gets. You don't want your shutter speed to be moving in and out. That will mess up your quality. So you have to put your filming device, whether it's your phone or your camera, you have to put it in manual mode and make these adjustments yourself. Otherwise, you're just leaving it up to the camera to do what it feels is best. Get out of auto mode, take control of what your device can do, and switch to manual. So this is why you want to keep your shutter speed basically double whatever your frame rate is. The next thing that you have to look at is your ISO, or you'll hear it referred to as ISO. That determines how sensitive the lens is going to be to light. So if you have your ISO set really, really high, that's this here, watch what happens. This is really low. So you see how it makes everything dark and I haven't changed my lighting at all. If I set it to really high, everything looks washed out. You can't see any detail. Two more things we're going to talk about. The first one is your white balance. Now, this was something that really messed me up because I had no idea that this was even a thing. White balance is used to balance out skin tones, to make them look better, to make them look cooler, to make them look warmer. And then if I change this, you notice how now it's going more towards like a yellow gold color. So I personally like a cooler tone because I feel like it makes the colors look more vibrant and it makes them look more true. I don't want to have my quality look oversaturated and I look really red and my products don't look true to color. So if you go down to a lower number, then you can see that it looks blue. So that is something else that you can set on your phone. You want to have your autofocus on and that is it. Um, these other settings, tint, contrast, saturation, that's all stuff you can change. If you like where this setting is, but you feel like it's still too red, then saturation will help make your colors look a little more red or a little cooler. So sometimes if you feel like you film something and your colors aren't showing true, that's something you can change. Or if you want to change your tint, you have to play with this stuff. It's all going to be your preference. There's no right or wrong. It's whatever you want, but you have to sit down and play with it and figure it out. All right, guys, I think that's it. Um, I know it's a lot. Play with it on your off days. Don't try to do it the day you have to film because it will stress you out. The bad thing is if you film during the day one time and then you film at night a different time, then it's two different settings. So you have to check it every single time you set up. But it's worth it. I mean, this is what we signed up for. We want to be YouTubers. We want to have great quality. You got to keep learning to improve your skill. I hope this video helped you guys. Take notes, pause, write it down, rewind, do whatever you need to do. If you watch some of my older videos to now, I think you'll agree that this quality is better and it's a lot more consistent throughout the video than when I did it before. Sorry I was a little all over the place. I just wanted to try to show you guys as much as I can and show you how the changes make a difference so you know why you need to adjust it. Again, if you have any questions, comment below. Let me know. I'll try to do some more research and I will get back with you. Thanks for tuning in for this video, guys. Take what you learned and go make some great content. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.